What are you doing? Uh, what? 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 Who? Yeah. What are you doing? Uh, Captain, you, you've caught me off my guard. You can see that? Uh, I'm just uh, surveying the, the foamy seas. What are you seeing there? Oh, nothing but a squirrel and some fog blowing up. Yeah. It's like good hunting weather. Aye, aye, Captain. All right, then. Let's, uh, dive into it, then. Silverdome Radio, a division of Silverdome Productions, and a special guest cast proudly present the second annual birthday broadcast. A nautical adventure entitled A Vast, set upon the seven seas. With adventure, with romance, insanity. Our cast will set sail into an adventure never to be equaled again. Join us now as we board ship and set sail for the second annual birthday broadcast of Vast. It was late in the year 1782, and three merchant ships set out from Calais, bound for Paraguay. The HMS Semaphore, the HMS Metaphor, and the HMS Uncalled For, on a voyage of commercial trading, it would seem safe enough their cargo was locked beneath the hold with tarpaulins over top and was not a voyage of great note. However, the seas were not safe during that time. Yet for all that, the captain of the HMS Metaphor, one Sir Algernon Boynt, did not feel particularly concerned as he came on deck that day. Good morning, my gallant crew. How are you today? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. And how are you, Miss Constance? Well, a bit windblown, but the voyage seems to be going well so far. I understand you're looking for your father. Oh, oh upon my wishes and best honor, I do hope so. I understand. We will be sure to get you there very safely. And you, Senorita Soera? I'm fine. I've always loved the ocean, but I miss my father. Your father? Yes. You mean the great Don Donaldo? Yes, but he was going to make me marry someone very, very, well, never mind. But this is sad news indeed. Very much sad news. Well, uh, Wilbur Higgins, sir. Yeah, I'm here. Please step forward. Good to see you, Captain. How is that main split up there? Yeah, pretty good. It looks kind of wobbly to me. Would you mind scrolling up that and taking a look? Aye, aye, I certainly can do that. And you, Arthur Gallant. Hello. How are you this evening? I'm doing excellent. Good. I want you to be aware, in case you hadn't noticed, that there is a fog setting in. Indeed there is. The first thing to know about a fog is that you can't see it in it. And when there's a fog going around, what precautions should you take? Drink a lot of water. Precisely, my boy. Precisely. Now. Oh! Captain! Captain! Uh, yes, sir? The HMS uncalled for is signaling. Uh, what are they saying? They're saying they've been called back to England. Called back to England? Do you know why, sir? They say it's urgent and we have to proceed on voyage. I guess they were uncalled for. My goodness. Well, that leaves only the semaphore and, of course, us, the metaphor. We will sail on, though, press on to the new world with our cargo of vanished bullion. And so sail on they did, deeper and deeper, into the black heart of the fog. Fog starts out white, and then it gets gray, and then when you're in the very depths of it, you can't see a black dog in front of your face. <laughs> You can, you can hear it, usually. And they were completely separated from the HMS semaphore. Mr. Higgins, sir, I want you to signal the semaphore and tell them that we must stick closer together. Uh, Captain, I, I hate to bring up such a prospect, but in a fog like this, it's quite likely we might run into pirates. Well, I'm not so concerned about pirates as I am you signaling the semaphore. I will do that, sir. I will. I'm just afraid of pirates. 
And so Wilbur Higgins manfully scaled the riggings with a lantern and flint and tinder in his hand. And once up in the crow's nest, he lit the candle and waved the lantern over his head in the predetermined signal. And there, out in the darkness, an answering lantern appeared. It's good. And so, he called down his news to the captain. Everything's all right, Captain. Everything all right. Do they answer a reply? Yes, I saw the lantern. Very hard to see through the fog. Sort of like a lightning bug. So they're still with us? They are. Very good, Mr. Higgins. Thank you, sir. And he told Wilbur Higgins and the rest of the crew that they would set course for the semaphore. Set course for the semaphore? And towards it they did go. And they drew together quite quickly. But then they realized that something was amiss. I didn't know she had three masts. I'm pretty sure she was a two-master. And that was when the captain's voice called out from across the water. Hello there, blokes! Oh, no! Hello there, sir! Is this the semaphore? <laughs> My, what a big voice you have! Aye! What a lovely ship you have there! Well, thank you. We're carrying Spanish bullion. Yar. Oh, yes, sir. What are you carrying? Cannons was what they were carrying. They opened fire upon the expeditionist oh metaphor. The fighting was fierce. The cannons were hot. The smoke mixed with the fog and swirled around. We're taking on water! We're taking on water! And all of them plunged into the icy water. Pirates! Was this the end for the HMS Metaphor and her gallant crew? We'll answer that question just after this commercial break. Nelson Chow here. Nelson Chow. You ever want to hear things in, in higher definition? Well, now you can with Pyong, the ear cleaning service that'll keep your ears clean, no vacuum needed. All we need is all you need is order for fourteen ninety five. Right now, you can get Pure. It'll make a, your life such a difference. And now we have some testimonials from satisfied customers who've ordered Pure and have changed their lives around. Hey, uh, I'm a DJ. My name's Julius. I I really enjoy this product. It works wonders for me because. I mix music and I wear headphones a lot. My headphones are pretty dirty. I got my ears pretty dirty. Couldn't hear a thing. But once I use the product, I can hear crystal clear again. I mix music again well. Thanks. Thanks, Julius. Have a great day. You too. Okay, come on. Come on now. We need some more testimonials here. I've only been using for a week. I, I still don't have my hearing back. Thank you. Um, I, I, I listen to the birds in my backyard and sometimes in the morning they aren't as loud and that's the time I use Piol because... It, it was really a struggle for me, and I, I love the birds. The birds make my day. So, with Pion, it made it better. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Once again, fourteen ninety five. dollars Pion, it'll change your life around. Have a great day. There were bells on the hill, but I never heard them ringing. No, I never heard them at all Till there was Pyong. We now return to our pirate adventure Avast! A hand shot down into the water and grabbed the arm of Sir Algernon Boyant, captain of the sunken metaphor. Come on, come on, get up here! It dragged him onto the deck of the pirate ship. Oh, oh, who are you? I am Captain Bluffer. Captain Bluffer of the Palooka Pirates? Aye, that's me. And this is my crew. Welcome aboard. Oh, well, well thank you. Uh, my, my ship, it sunk. You'll never get the treasure. 
I'm sorry? You'll never get our cargo! What... what cargo did you have on that there... Well, ship? Well, we were just a load, a full load of Spanish bullion cubes! Bullion cubes? Yes, bullion cubes! Well, that's no good. See, look, the ocean is turning into chicken soup! You see all this? Well, that means we'll never run out of anything to eat. That's true. Yes, it's very good. And so the captain and their pirate crew continued to drag the bedraggled survivors of the HMS metaphor sinking onto the ship. <laughs> Come on! Get them up here, you scallywags! Pull them on the boat! Notable among the crew was one bedraggled woman who refused to give her name. Port her below the deck, I've had enough! You can't put me below the deck! I won't let you! Now oh, shut up, Tennis! You know what? You men have time! And so the captain ordered her to be put adrift on one of the half sunken lifeboats of the HMS Metaphor. Watch, Captain Bluffer! I must protest! Yeah, he must protest! Fine then! You'll go too! No, no, no! no. No, me. No, 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 no. And so into the water they went and rode away. You know what? If we have to eat one of us, has to eat you? No, no, we'll eat you first. No, I think you. No, but you're. Oh, no, And so it was that the crew of the HMS Metaphor was aboard the pirate ship of the dreaded Panuka Pirates. But there was a problem. Where to put the crew on an already overcrowded pirate ship? Aye. That'll be a problem, Flapjack. It will, but you forget the hold in the basement. What hold? Right below your feet there, I believe. You mean the brig? I do. I, I, yes, that's right. The brig of the Palooka pirate ship was down at the very bottom of the base of the mast, just one floor over the armory. It was a slimy, seedy place full of rats and old breadcrumbs and cast-aside children's toys. The Palooka Pirates were not all bad. But the point is that the crew of the HMS Metaphor was marched down there at gunpoint. The pirate captain explained why he had not thrown them all off of the ship. Aye, there's uh, two maidens there. I think we should be keeping them aboard. Don't you think? Yes, I do! I... Wasn't talking to you. Uh, it's always good luck to bring the maidens aboard. I agree. All right. Then keep them and this fellow and that fellow. Maybe a few others. The rest of them, overboard! No, no! Yes! Yes! <laughs> and so, one of the young sailors, one Arthur C. Gallant, protested loudly and demanded a private audience with the pirate captain. Captain, please, I have to talk to you. Why? It's a private matter. So? It demands attention now! Fine, fine. Follow me to my quarter. Thank you. And so up they went, into the pirate's captain's opulent chambers. The door swung shut, and Arthur C. Gallant revealed his greatest secret. Dang, did you refurbish in here? It looks really, really nice. Aye, I did. Don't you like the couch? Yeah. It's great for sleeping. Captain, I have a secret to tell you. I'm really not Arthur C. Gallant. Then who are you, boy? I'm Lord Wimbledon. Who's that? I'm Lord of Wimbledon, England. The tennis place? Exactly. Oh. I'm one of the greatest in the world right now. But I'm on board because the love of my life is on this ship as well. I have to... I have to change her heart towards me. Oh, who's that? It's... It's... Uh, Senorita Suera. Yeah, she's a lovely lady. Yes, she is. But you, you must tell no one. No one at all. All right, then. Here. 
It's a token of my word. My promise, I give you my family ring. It's been in my family for many generations. Very nice. I enjoy it. Don't lose it. I won't. Good. Arthur C. Gallant, or I should say Lord Wimbledon, explained that the only reason for saving his life was not his true love, but also his significant financial resources and the possibility for a pardon for the captain. If you tell no one, and if you keep your word and release us afterwards, I have a large sum of money which I'll be able to give to you. Just, just keep us safe. Please don't, don't do anything to us. All right. Those of you that are in the brig, no harm will come to you. Good. You'll receive your payment after we are safely back in England. But because he could not be allowed to wander the deck without some piratical supervision, old bluffer the captain assigned, I suppose we should continue to call him Arthur C. Gallant, a certain companion. Uh, is the... Oh, yes, Captain! Yeah, Flapjack. Oh, yeah, Flapjack reporting. I've got a task for you. Uh, anything you demand, sir? Got to keep an eye on this uh, Arthur C. Gallant. Uh, you mean this young, helpless lad? Yeah, keep an eye on him. Make uh, sure he stays within certain boundaries. I'll tell you those later. Yes, sir. Make sure, though, that no harm comes to him. And no harm will come to him, sir, don't you worry. Wonderful. Hello, Flapjack. Uh, hello, little Arthur there. <laughs> uh, looks like you got some sea legs under you there. Yes. I've I've been to sea quite a few times. Really? Oh. They make him younger and younger, I'll tell you that much. And so, Arthur C. Gallant was released to roam the pirate ship under the watchful one eye of Flapjack Mac. He was a pirate of dubious origin who had been cast aside by nobility as a youth. And so perhaps it was good that he did not know Lord Wimbledon's true identity, for he had a deep and abiding hatred of all things noble. And so, Flapjack Mac escorted him back down, down to the brig, where the crew waited in the darkness to discover their fate. Mr. Gallant, what did he say to you? Uh, nothing. I was just talking in, in terms of caring for the rest of us. Oh, so we will be safe? I believe so. He yes. means us no harm. He just wanted our treasure. You are very brave. Thank you very much. You're welcome. The gallant heart of Arthur C. Gallant had touched the Senorita Rosita Suara, known as the Spanish Daffodil. But Constancy P. Bluffery was not to be so quickly comforted, for her great task had been hindered. My father, have you had any news? I'm sorry, Constance. No, no, no news as of yet. But have hope. You will find him. I don't take you at your word. I don't think I can believe you. Just trust your heart. He will find you, and you will find him. Constance Arthur is a good man. He will help you find your father. But do not believe the part about believing your heart, because it is deceitful above all things. Excuse me, <clears throat> Arthur Gallant. Arthur Gallant. Yes, excuse me, sir. Um, seeing as how uh, the Captain Moyant has sailed off with uh, Janice, may I speak in his stead? I have an idea. Yes, of course. I think there are enough of us to take over this ship. Now, let me tell you a little story. I once had a brother, Albert. Now, Albert was not very bright. You see, he was stuck in the hold of the ship, and he tried to dig his way out. He dug through the side of the ship. When he dug through, the water shot in, and they all drowned. Now, well, they made a movie out of that and called it the Titanic. But actually, I was thinking we could dig through the mast. The mast? Yes, well, I know what you're thinking. The mast is rock hard. Of course. You can't dig through it. Yes. Wrong. Most masts are made out of cedar. What? This mast, as I have examined it, is made out of spruce. And as we all know, spruce masts are very soft on the inside. Uh, but of course. Now, if you could look around and find a sharp utensil, we 
might just be able to dig our way in and up. Once we are up in the middle of the night, we shall flash over the ship with no mercy. Senorita Sarwa, can I have one of your happens? I, I think I have two or three. Here you are. Are these good enough, Wilbur? Perhaps a bit thin, but it's a good start. Look around for they a fork or something. They are Spanish. They will be fine. We will dig now, and when we make our way up, we will not come out until full moon. No, 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 no. We should be behind the clouds at night. But let's start digging now. This could take a few days. Very well, Bubba. Great idea. Dig away. And dig they did. In shifts. One by one, they each took turns, digging at the heart of the spruce mast. It was the third shift, the ninth straight hour of digging, and Wilbur Higgins was buried deep inside the mast, digging with Senorita Suarez's hairpins. Constance P. Bluffery approached. Excuse me, Mr. Higgins, may I be of any service? Oh, actually, <laughs> if you could find a broom and sweep away some of this sawdust, this that would one right be here. wonderful. Here you go. Oh. Oh, thank you. Well, you know, what brings a fine lady like yourself on such a crew like us? Oh, me? Well, I I've been doing some searching, really. Hey, what kind of searching? Oh, well, I... My father, he disappeared. He, he was a naval architect, and he was in the Royal Navy, and he shipwrecked some time ago, and we've been searching for him, really. One, one moment. What year was he shipwrecked? Sorry, out of curiosity, must I must know. Well, it was about... It was really about three years ago. Maybe longer, I've lost track. It was about three years ago that my brother, Albert, also was sunk in a ship. I have not seen him since, and I've been looking for him my whole blooming life as well. Maybe we could look for him together. I'm sorry to hear that. But we, we really must dig first yeah. before we look. Oh, <laughs> Gotta get out of here before we can search for them. <laughs> yeah. All right. Give me a hand oh, here with this hairpin. Oh, what? Yeah. what are you two? What are you lads doing here? No, <laughs> Suddenly they saw that uh, Flapjack uh, Mac had crept up behind them while they were unawares. We're just uh, carving all old initials and this Bit of architecture, mask. really. <laughs> you know, it yeah, sounded like you're having a little bit of a conversation there. Oh, yeah, you know, just conversing. Yeah. Nothing to do with a mask. No. <laughs> Nothing or at all. Well, yeah, uh, all these are mine, by the way. Thank I you. was just carving my initials, you know, WH in the mask. <laughs> WH part, uh, Constantine. <laughs> you know. Nothing about getting off this order after, eh? Of <laughs> Never. Of course not. Never. I like it here. Yeah. I love the fresh smell of a beautiful ship's hull. Yes, and the sound of the creaking is just soothing, really. It reminds me of my. <laughs> My little carriage I was, was in when I was a baby. With some difficulty, they managed to convince Flapjack Mac that they were not actually engaging in an attempt to escape from the ship. Say, Flapjack, uh, shouldn't you be with Arthur Gallant? Mm. I'll take orders from only one person, and it ain't you. Uh, just a suggestion, sir. Just a suggestion you wouldn't want to get uh, the pirate, the captain pirate, very angry with you now, would you? Got you would have a point there. <laughs> so you better scoot along. Yeah, you better. Yeah, no, good chatting with both of you. <laughs> no, it was fine chatting with you. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 really. Away he went. But that interaction only made them realize the peril of their situation. Constance, I think they're on to us. We better just put a pause on our digging and go find Gallant. We really need to have a discussion. I think we need to come up with some sort of plan to distract the entire crew from doing what we are doing with this mast. And so they went to go find Arthur C. Gallant. Arthur C. Gallant, little as they knew then, was leaning over the railing, looking at the tossing blue waves. His eyes gazing over the stars and the sea, the wind ruffling the hair of the beautiful girl beside him, Senorita Rosita Suara, the Spanish daffodil. She had come up on deck with him at special permission of the captain and as they gazed out over the water she told him of her history. I really never meant to be on a ship at all but I needed to get away from my father for he was going to make me marry this horrible man. A horrible man? Yes. Tell me more. 
Lord Wimbledon from England. He was ugly and boring and his face was shaped like a tennis racket. Lord Wimbledon? Yes. I, I think I've heard of him before. I heard of him too and I couldn't stand hearing my name next to his, so I ran away. Well, he, he couldn't have been that bad, could he? I, oh, he was. All he would talk about is tennis and he kept making stupid puns about love and all this stuff. Never. Lord Wimbledon is a fine gentleman. How do you know? I've met him at a banquet before. Then you know how boring and how mean and nasty he is. You have to take another look. He's deeper than that. Well, I didn't get to talk to him very much, but my father wanting me to marry him was enough for me to run away. And she cast her mind back to that moment when she had spoken with her father. It was not a pleasant memory. My beautiful daughter Suera, I have such great plans for you, for our family. You are my only daughter. I want you to marry a good man. Yes, but... So many of these Spanish so-called gentlemen, oh, was wasting their life on all these things, going out for treasure. But Lord Wimbledon, he is a man of character, of strength. I know you have only seen him once, but my daughter, he is such a great man, handsome, strong, of good character. You must marry him, my daughter Suera. But Papa, I don't want to. I want to stay here with you. I don't care about him at all. Please, Papa, do not make me do this. Please, Papa. But my daughter Suera, he is, he is so strong and so, so wealthy and such a wonderful person. He shall improve the family name. But Papa, I don't care about money. I don't want to marry him. Please, Papa. You will not defy me like that, Sora. I am Don Donaldo de la Ducci. And I am your father. I... You will not no. disobey I me. Won't stay. You must marry no. me. Suera? No, I'm going. Suera! I can't stay! Suera, you must marry! That very night, I ran away. I was not sure where to go. But then I saw the ship. And I thought that it would take me far away. So here I am. You defied your father? Yes. I had to. I could not marry that man. He couldn't have been that bad. Oh, but you didn't know him. He was boring and nasty and nothing like you. You were gallant and brave and kind. Martha! Martha! Can, Can you hear me? Hello? Uh, is, that, is that you, Constance? The is there in the Wilbur? Grate? Look down! Oh, there you are. Yes. yes. Hi. Got into more trouble with deep, deep trouble. What's wrong? Flapjack Mac is is on to us. He knows what we're doing. The plan is oh, ruined. No. We need a plan, sir. We need your brains. Arthur. Uh, okay, give give me a couple seconds. Let me think. Thinking. Not enough thinking. time. Hurry up. Okay, okay. Um, okay. Here's what we'll do. We need to we need to find a way for the crew to to mutiny against against Captain Bluffer. So we we need them to get angry at him. So. I know. We'll have to make it sound like he's being cruel to his crew. We'll give right. we'll give false orders. I'll give them as if they're from the captain to 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 flap back flapjack Mac. Right. And then he'll give them to the crew. Right. And they'll get angry at the captain. Right. And then they'll mutiny. And then in the midst of their mutiny, we'll right. escape or something. A diversion. Exactly. I like it. Oh, Let's do it then. Very good. Yes. Wait, Let's do it. I'll, I'll, I'll create the diversion. Wilbur and Constance. Dig, we'll dig. Yes, continue yes. digging. Oh, I'll go dig with you. Good. Constance, where, where did you put the hairpins? Oh, oh, the right behind. Oh, right here in my hand. Here you go. Right. I'll go talk to Flapjack Mac. Until then. Yes. Flapjack? Oh, yes, sir. The captain orders all of you, crew, to stand on one foot for the rest of the day. Oh, uh, what? Yes, one foot for the rest of the day. Uh, what are they going to do with the other foot? We should have something for them to do with the other foot, don't you think? Yes, I do. Uh, Why what, don't we have them uh, tie their foot behind their back and then throw them overboard? <laughs> No, not that one. How about another one? Well, why don't we have them um, tie a seat into the other foot and uh, let them lick it off? 
No, how <laughs> something else. Uh, They're uh, great ideas, though. Well, we'll just hang them from the other foot, and then have them bob mm. for apples. Yes, yes, yes. The old ones in the barrel yes, under uh, the deck. Uh, uh, yes. Another one. Yes. Give me another idea. I don't know what's wrong with the captain anymore. Last night, he had me attach a lobster to my nose. Never. Yesterday afternoon, he dragged me up behind the ship. And the night before, I had to be in a whole room full of all the rats, and he said for me to name them and make friends with them. Oh, he made me sing in front of the whole crew. <laughs> <laughs> what's wrong with the captain, though? Why are we getting all these new orders all of a sudden? That's right. <laughs> Hey, boys! How's hey, it going? Shh, it's a cabin! <clears throat> well, don't like you very much. I mean... <laughs> <clears throat> what was that? No, nothing. 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 Good day, Captain. What have you been up to lately, then? Oh, nothing. Just All walking around with no lobsters on our nose. Lo lobsters? Right. right. The crew's dissatisfaction with the captain was only increasing. The plan was working perfectly. Silverdome Radio Family Hour will return shortly after this short commercial break. Last time on The Adventures of Laddie, the Wonder German Shepherd, Laddie had run over 14 miles of uneven terrain to tell John's father that little Johnny had fallen down a well in the forest. We join them now. What, what, what's that, the little dog? John's in trouble. Where is he? Stuck in a well. Oh, let's go right now. Laddie began running over hill and dale, leading little Johnny's father close behind him. Oh, don't wait, don't wait, wait up there, little dog. Laddie started sniffing around the base of a giant oak tree. Oh, oh, it's an oak tree. I fell in a well next to an oak tree. John's father began digging, thinking that John was submerged Hold on under there, the Johnny, earth. We're coming. As he dug, suddenly his shovel struck something. Oh no! It was a bone. <coughs> this is all that's left of, of little Johnny. Oh no! Oh, how could you take that? As Laddie Johnny? ate the bone, little Johnny's father failed to realize that Laddie had led him wrong. When it comes to things that matter, you want a brand you can trust. When it comes to choosing denture adhesive, choose Dr. Smalls. Dr. Smalls Denture Adhesive. For the important times. We now return you to SDP Radio Family Hour. Evening had come. If you had been listening, you could have heard the soft sound of Wilbur Higgins digging in the mast. Constance P. Bluffery was below, sweeping out the sawdust. But up on deck a lonely figure stood silhouetted against the setting sun, gazing over the rolling waves. Arthur C. Gallant's eyes were full of regret and memory. He was lost in thought and didn't hear it when Senorita Rosita Sawara came up behind him. What are you thinking about, Arthur? About England. And about a girl I met there. A, a girl? Yes, a, a girl. I, I'm, I'm sure that she, she must love you very much. Unfortunately, she doesn't. Or at least, she didn't. Well, Arthur, I just want to let you know that I appreciate so much the leadership you've been taking on this trip. We would never have been able to convince the captain that the crew wouldn't... Arthur, I'm so grateful. Thank you so much for being the kind of person that all of us needed. Well, my only strength came from one person. And as they spoke quietly between themselves, we may turn our gaze back towards the riggings, where, clinging to the ropes, hunched a dark and villainous figure. It was Lapjack Mac as he watched them and listened to Senorita Rosita Suara describe what she appreciated about Arthur C. Gallant, he realized nobody had ever 
appreciated him. Oh, that little squirmy worm, the gallant. Oh, I was a leader. Such a big leader. Well, he wouldn't have let them done anything except for him. Oh, who doesn't know a leader after you were looking at him once? Well, oh, Flapjack, you're such a leader, you should be the captain. You're not this gallant fool coming on this boat and taking over. Oh. And so then in his heart he purposed to be the downfall of Arthur C. Gallant. But before he could do that, there was another little matter to clear up. See, some of the crew had been talking that evening. <laughs> they were very dissatisfied with these orders that the captain had been giving. Flapjack Mac, as the oldest and most relied upon member of the crew, thought it his only his duty to go and to inquire of the captain what he was thinking. Captain, 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 you've been keeping that extra rub around. I think we can have a chance to use it. I need to talk to you. All right, into my quarters. Let's go. Good. This is very urgent. There you go. There's been mutterings among the crew, and I need to come to you, because they've always been your number one uh, pirate on this ship. Yeah, uh, my pour, first pour mate. Me, pour me another one there. Okay, here you go. All right. Yes, there's been rumblings, and I've been hearing things. I needed to come to you. This is what it is. Have you been given these orders that we've been hearing lately? I don't know what orders you've been talking about. Well, surely you understand what I'm talking about. The licking the decks clean, the jumping okay, overboard okay. into the freezing cold water, the scrubbing with the blind. You know what I'm talking about. I thought y'all were acting a bit weird. What's but been going on? Where have these orders been coming from? I haven't been giving them. Wait a minute. I do. It was all made up by Arthur C. Gallant! No! Yes! Well then, trust has been betrayed. I want an inspection of every man on this ship. Everyone on deck. Get everyone up here, now! So all hands came out onto the deck. And the prisoners were dragged up among them. Oh, good! No! You can't do this! What's that noise out there? I, I think they're calling for an inspection. We better get down quick. Yes. Quick. Oh. Oh. I, I'm I passed. Almost, I'm too fast. I'm almost out. Oh, I'm out. Uh, Look, you go on without me. I, I can't. I won't. Blast this. Blast this mast. I'm stuck fast. Oh. Leave me. And so Constance, without any choice, fled from the base of the mast up, up onto the deck. Arrayed there, they stood in front of the captain who towered over them, the picture of an angry pirate lord. He demanded an explanation. What has been going on? What have these orders been coming from that I've been hearing of? The crew rumbled instantly, angry. <laughs> Why has you been giving us the orders? <laughs> I haven't been giving any orders. Gallant, explain yourself. Sir, these orders came directly from you. Well, I, I... From you. You mean to say all the orders, all the orders we've been given about the lobsters and the scrubbing and the brine and the licking, all that was Arthur C. Gans. We've been taking orders from a prisoner? No. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Someone better tell me, where is Higgins? All the prisoners instantly looked at Constance. Uh, Constance? Where were you? Where is Higgins? He was here earlier. I don't. I don't know. Do you mean to say that Arthur C. Gallant threw him overboard? It's all Arthur C. Gallant's fault. It's all Arthur C. Gallant's fault. No, honestly, he was here. Captain, punish him! Punish him! All right, everyone, quiet. Flapjack. Aye, aye, sir. What do you think? Well. I say, throw him overboard! Throw him overboard! Gallant must walk the plank! It was the ancient pirate punishment, the execution reserved for mutineers and blackguards. And so a heavy chain was wrapped around Arthur C. Gallant's ankles with a cannonball tied to the end, and the plank was extended. Knowing his fate, he submitted and walked forward, down, down, the longest walk he'd ever take to the end of the plank. And as he was preparing to step off, 
the captain noticed the ring that was on his hand. Wait, wait. Before you go, I'll be needing that ring back. You promised you wouldn't say anything. Yes, well, that was before you broke my trust. Hand it over. Very well. And he slowly removed the ring and extended it out towards the pirate captain. And as he held out his hand, it passed just before the eyes of Constance P. Bluffrey. <gasps> Who fainted it away, oh. and so are his arms. Constance! Constance! Hey! Is that treasure? Treasure! Oh, oh treasure! treasure. Oh, no, no, no! This is my ring. Oh, oh it's a symbol of trust. And now that this scallywag's betrayed it, I suppose it won't hurt. This is not Arthur C. Gallant, who you will assume. This is none other than Lord Wimbledon oh. of Tennis Court. It is a spare his life! Spare his life! Senora, Senorita Sawara rushed out onto the plank and joined him. Arthur! She I'm... demanded that the captain spare his life. Captain, you must! You cannot kill him! I am his betrothed! There is no way the pirate codes demand that he you must. Are... Yeah. Yeah, pirate codes! <laughs> the pirate captain explained. There is only one very rare exception to this particular Wh case. Which was not the case now. And so. Arthur C. Gallant, Lord Wimbledon, faced. The briny deaths. No. <laughs> he took a deep breath, and as he prepared to commit himself to the deep. No. Oh, oh, where am I? Oh, the ring! The ring! Father? What? Oh. Constance P. Bluffrey had awoken, and she was gazing at the pirate captain in astonishment. Why are you looking at me like that? <laughs> you are the ring! I am not the ring! You have... I am a man! You have the ring! You're my father! I am! I'm... your daughter! Constance! My lost daughter! Papa! They ran into each other's arms in a warm embrace. And he explained his history. You all must understand, I was once a naval architect. Royal Navy, but was shipwrecked on Bongolau Island when a certain crew member named Albert decided to dig a hole through my boat. From then on, there was no way but to become a pirate, commandeer a vessel of my own, pick up a scallywag crew, and sail the oceans. There was no way for me to return. And he had missed his daughter deeply ever since, and was touched by her bravery in going to seek him across the Seven Seas. Where have you been all these years? What I... have you been doing? I've been looking for you everywhere. And I've been looking for you, Father. Really, there's been nothing else. I've dedicated my whole life to it. I missed you so much. Aye, it's all right. <clears throat> Captain, I hate to break up this touching moment, but uh, I do believe there's still an execution to attend to. No! <sighs> Just a moment now. As I have said before, there is one very rare case in which plank does not have to be walked. Uh, yes. That's an exception? Yes, yes, yes. I said it before, you bums. What is it, Father? Is in the case of a daughter finding her lost father. So, he, he's free to go! He is free. Oh, Arthur! Darling. <laughs> and so, the father and daughter, and the two star-crossed betrothed ones found each other. But yes, the one rare exception to pirate law when the long-lost daughter of a pirate captain discovers him to be her long-lost father and asks for the lives of her friends to be spared, then, and only then, shall the mutineer not walk 
the flank. So overjoyed was Lord Wimbledon by this freedom that he immediately promised the captain and all of the pirate crew full pardon on return to England. Captain, for your mercy, you shall receive full pardon and a nice Spanish estate on a, on a very nice island. Excellent! Break out the rum! <laughs> 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 Wilbur Higgins had climbed up to the very top of the mast. It's all right, Wilbur! Yes, it is time for flight! We're all free! The mast is breaking! Oh, no. Whoa! 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 Whoa. Oh, no. Whoa. It took them a little longer than anticipated to sail back to England. This has been a very special second anniversary birthday broadcast. A vast, a nautical adventure of the Seven Seas. Our cast today included Janice. Oh, look at this beautiful island! I think I pronounced myself Queen! Jason Cunningham. But you cannot be pronounced Queen just because we drifted onto our magical island somewhere. Unless I'm King, that is, of course. <laughs> Brett Jansen. Darling, can you please maybe something more just better for dinner? Lydia Hartnett. Wilbur, we're going to carve out another mast again. David Galbraith. Blast that mast in which I got stuck quite fast. Casey Tiran. Oh, Arthur, I'm so happy that we get to play tennis together all the time. Me too, darling. Danny Mays. Suera. Suera, you must marry. Suera. Alex Goodling. Aye, bring out more rum. Michael Hartnett. Nobody leaves Flapjack under the mask! Get this mask off me! And I, as always, am your host, Thurgood Van Ivers. Thank you for joining us, and we'd all like to give a great big hand to the founder, director, and birthday celebrity, Jason Cunningham! <laughs> we'll see you all next year. Uh, you're listening to Post Show Notes. Uh, today is July 22nd, 2002. This was a scary show. We thought that we weren't going to have enough people to actually make it yeah. happen. But yeah. yeah, we almost didn't. <laughs> but we did. And um, Mike Hartnett, who's <laughs> currently eating a microphone stand, microphone. Um, oh, did a fantastic <laughs> job as Flapjack Matt. Yes, yes, he did. Our stand-in, because yeah. Stephen Poivre yeah. left Because Stephen Poivre had to go because he Boy, has a brand new baby niece. Brand new baby niece. Oh, what? Yeah. Oh, this girl. Great. Yeah. Cool. On Thursday. <laughs> well, if we can just really quickly go around, starting with Alex Goodling. Uh, Alex, <laughs> Alex, not Alice. <laughs> Alice. Oh, yeah, that's, that's my new name, actually. <laughs> Alice. Because Alex has to go. So. Some people say yes, Alexis. But right, well, what is it? Uh, something quick you liked about some favorite part of the show. Oh, gosh. Um, uh, this is totally impromptu, so I have no clue. What to say, but I I'd like to thank really the industry. <laughs> and and thank me. Thank you I just I'm I'm tearing up. Here. Um, no, I guess I don't know. It was just a lot of fun to just be here with all you guys. So there wasn't any specific part of the show that I really liked. I enjoyed uh, interacting with uh, Mike. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> that was good times. All right. All right. So all right, purple. Okay, that could be yours, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> all right, earrings. David. Um, take out your earrings. Well, I I think I liked the beginning better than the end. Oh, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> at, an interesting thing was the vocal quality that I ended up choosing was very straining. So I had to drink gallons of water <laughs> and literally, literally and every moment. Literally. And okay. really, it's just everyone's different. But I, for one, am not one who's able to drink gallons of water. <laughs> All right, you know what? Let's keep this <laughs> safely. <laughs> All right, so, moving on. Danny, what was your favorite next. part? 
Yes, I played the part of Don Donaldo de la Du. du okay. Du, du, du. Um, I think my favorite part of the show was probably the ending. The ending uh-huh. was just killer. Nice. And uh, whoever came up with that whole mast thing, brilliance. Pretty much brilliance. But guys, this has been so much fun. I've loved hanging out with you guys. This has been awesome. So, <laughs> woo! Okay, Mike. Mike, what was your favorite part? <laughs> You're Mike. Mike Hart- you. You're Michael Hardin. Hardin. Yes. You in the glasses. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he didn't have a favorite He's part. He's speechless. He apparently he liked his name tag. Yeah, apparently that was a lot. Part. Well, David stole mine. I mean, I think that just making such a just exerting voice that I had to portray on Mike really just took, you know, a level of confidence. I, it just took me to a new level. I just had to mm. perform. I had to perform. And Great, I, we're moving on now. <laughs> hey, <laughs> the game so much. It's enough from that. Is your voice gone? Like Casey? Mine. Um, first of all, these headphones really kill. And you're really close to the microphone. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. And I need to learn how to stand back from the microphone. And, uh, it was definitely a challenging show because I had to do a Spanish accent, and I think I failed half the time. But it actually took no, six actually, months of Spanish. <laughs> she did. It's true. Six years, actually. The yeah, right. accent but coaching, actually, strenuous yeah. accent Shout out coaching. To her but actually, for the character, word, it's word, but, she really, but this, for the character, it's song. actually it sounded pretty good, Casey. Good. Yeah. Not, not Transylvanian like Alex. <laughs> well, it was. No, it was in or the beginning. Uh, Lydia. Uh, Lydia. Um, I've always wanted to be a budding romantic lead, but that, <laughs> that was completely that was unplanned. Com- yeah, exactly. There's just natural Unscripted. chemistry. <laughs> I mean, oh, I think that, was, oh, <laughs> that was a one-sided chemistry. natural chemistry. Whoa. Oh, oh. Is, is it, the rivalry continues. I'm, it's too bad we didn't get a Japanese hat maker in here. Oh, oh no. Yeah. From last year, but that's okay. Uh, Brett, how about for you? Oh, this Bretters. is definitely a learning experience for me. Yeah. It, was, it was a lot of fun. Um, it's... You know, obviously this is impromptu, and so it's hard. Mm-hmm. Um, so you have to have a lot. <laughs> so of- cute. You're so cute, Brett. You're so and cute. so it's hard. But I think we all came oh, together, God. and uh, yeah. we have a really strong team so, this year. Yeah, I was, I was, it was definitely encouraging to have you guys by my side oh, because wow. you guys Cheer helped me along the way. Um, yeah, so uh, it was a lot of fun. Uh, everybody did. Good job. It was a lot harder though with uh, not so many people, but yeah, right, quick, we we pulled through. <laughs> right. Personally, for me as a narrator, I always like it when I don't have to talk a lot. So mm-hmm. I was really enjoyed just how much the this cast took the uh, took the story and ran with it, and just scenes were very. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Mike, Mike's being foolish. All right, all right. All right. Jason, this, Jason? Is, this has been our broadcast. Wait, what cast was your favorite? Part? Yeah, Jason? My favorite part the was the whole experience, planning, anticipating, and my. I liked everything. Corny. <laughs> corny. It's my birthday. But that's on. my we, answer. We seriously need to pause right here and say a huge thank you to the Cunningham parents. Yeah. Yes. Yes. A ton yes. of Mr. work Cunningham, into this. Who, who is our yeah. sound engineer? Mr. Cunningham engineered the sound, did a fantastic yes, job. Did. Mrs. Cunningham opened up her home, cooked she, a delicious she, she bread. Lots of food. Hours or something close to that yeah. oh on the cake that we enjoyed. Yeah. 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 Um, so. And bought all the cream wow. puffs, yeah. and oh. my sister baked the cornbread wow. type so. thing. The Cunningham yeah. family, yeah. we the owe them a deep gret of, debt of gratitude. So. A great gret of uh, bread. A gret of gratitude. <laughs> <laughs> so that's it. This is Alex has to go. Minutes. We're so, done. Thank you for listening. Have a great afternoon. Bye. Bye. See you next year. Bye. See you Later. Next year.